Hey guys, I'm Blood with you, and today I wanted to do another Picking the Right video, but this time we're not going to be doing a ship, and instead we're going to be focusing on ground vehicles that are available in the game. At the current point in time, there's 17 actual ground vehicles in the game, meaning wheeled and drivable, with another three hover bikes that are currently flight ready and in the game, with another 5 to 10 scheduled for the upcoming development work. What that ultimately means is that there are a lot of options, but spending a lot of money on ground vehicles, which are limited in their usefulness, doesn't make a ton of sense. So if you do plan to buy any with real money, you need to make the right choice. Now, I do want to give the reminder that I always give when it comes to buying ground vehicles with real money. It doesn't ever make sense from the investment with real money to how long it takes you to earn and buy one in the game. They're cheap, they're readily available, and you're not really going to use them all that often. So I would suggest buying them in the game. But even so, the choices here and where you might use them are still good advice any way you buy them, so you're not overspending on UEC or real dollars um, on stuff that you just might not really use. So let's start off with your best bet for just general transportation and exploration. Um, I think eventually we're going to see vehicles that are better suited to exploration than others. But since that game loop isn't really in the game yet, things like scanners and science and those types of related items, um, those don't really matter yet and aren't a factor. So exploration currently is basically just driving from point A to point B, which is general transport. Thus, you know, we're kind of lumping these together. The first thing that you need to look for is deciding how many people that you want to take along. Um, because with that knowledge, that carrying ability for more people, that tends to end up taking up more space as well. If you're running solo and space is at a premium, the Knox is probably going to be your best bet. Assuming that cargo isn't a priority because it doesn't really carry any, carry any of it at all. Um, it's fast, it's small, it's hard to hit, um, it's a lot of fun to drive. And with a lot of ships that can carry it, it makes it a flexible option. Now, if you think you're going to have a second person, then the Dragonfly is really my preference because you get a little bit of storage ability plus a second seat. Um, they both come with some very small weaponry, but honestly, with how fast you move compared to personnel targets, um, it's just really, really hard to hit anything since you have to have them straight ahead of you. Um, so it's really more of a formality than anything, um, unless you have just a total swarm of bikes as well. Um, the bikes are hover, which means you don't have to worry about the same terrain-related issues that you would in a wheeled vehicle, which makes driving significantly easier and more enjoyable. That being said, the hover tech isn't perfect, uh, and there will be times that you get launched high into the sky and you'd be wishing you could touch the ground with some uh, wheels. <laughs> Um, both of these bikes are open canopy, so the external conditions are going to determine your lifespan in the elements, um, and that's going to be determined by your spacesuit and the temperature outside. Um, if you're more interested in just something that's simple and will take you and one other person from point A to point B, it's really hard to sleep on the Grey Cat PTV, otherwise known as the golf cart. It's crazy cheap, it has a very small profile, and for something that looks so fragile, it's surprisingly durable. It's resistant to flipping over as well, which is a really nice perk. And while it feels like it goes pretty fast, it will take you a little while to get somewhere. Um, it's also a little bit limited in its lack of cargo ca uh, capacity, making it just a decent little people mover that fits into a lot of ships. Um, like the bikes, it is also open air, meaning that weather suit is necessary for some places, depending on how um, hostile the environment is. Uh, if the ship that you're carrying the ground vehicle in is larger, then you can start looking at the Cyclones, which are some of my favorite ground vehicles in the game. They all fit at least two people, and while the more specialized ones have purposes that may be selected elsewhere in this video, for this purpose, I like the base Cyclone as it comes with cargo space to carry whatever you may need to bring along. Um, the reason they fit in so few ships is the um, reason that I like the Cyclones, and it's that they have a wide wheelbase, uh, and that associated stability that comes with that, meaning that you can cover terrain at great speed and have very few issues flipping over. Um, the problems come when you break a wheel off or you tumble off a cliff, but those can be avoided with a little bit of care. Um, but like all other vehicles discussed so far, the Cyclones are open to the environment as well. Now, at three to four people to transport, the Ursa is kind of your default rover. Um, it carries up to four SCU of cargo, which is nice. It also has a remote turret on top to deal with the threats if needed without a gunner being exposed to the elements. Um, that enclosed space also has room for people to walk around as needed, so working on some of the components that are available on the interior of the ship is going to be a perk as well. 
Speaking of that, it is our first fully enclosed vehicle, meaning that you're able just to wear a flight suit or whatever your oxygen needs are um, if you're not planning to be outside much because you're climate controlled. Um, you could even just be in civilian clothing in a nurse and be totally fine. Um, it's also a place that you can come back to and get warmed up or cool off if you're in an extreme environment as well. The Ursa is nice and complicated. It's comfortable and safe. Um, it's not super likely to roll over, but it's slow and not very nimble. It's also super tall, so it doesn't make it a real easy vehicle to transport because you're basically now looking at things like a Freelancer Max, Constellations, or anything bigger to get that job done. Uh, the Lynx is basically the same vehicle, but you sacrifice cargo for luxury. So if you prefer windows and tables to jump seats and cargo room, um, you can go that route. But I personally never choose luxury over practicality in the game. It just doesn't make sense with my brain. Um, if you're a player group that exceeds four, um, you basically only have one option remaining, which is the Spartan. Uh, it's built on the Atlas platform that we see the Centurion built on as well. Um, it holds up to eight players in drop seats with weapon racks. Um, so it's a more combat-focused vehicle to drop troops off to a fight, um, but it certainly doesn't have to be leveraged that way. Um, it has a slower speed, it's got very poor maneuverability, but the highest durability of all of these vehicles we've talked about so far. Uh, there are two major problems here, being that it is so large that you basically rely on something like a C2 to transport it, uh, and the other issue being that ground vehicles are fragile compared to ships, so putting eight troops in one tin can is generally a bad idea unless you've got a plan associated with it. Um, I would opt for multiple smaller vehicles over this if you have the cargo space to do it, and if you're carrying a Spartan, you can probably fit two Ursas, so um, that may be a better way to go. Um, but if you have a reason to need a large group in one vehicle, this is really the only one that gets up to this crew size, so it's kind of your default option. Now, if combat is your goal, then we need to start to filter down to the different ways that ground vehicles can get this done. Um, if we start small and simple, let's envision an anti-personnel type role, you know there are troops on the ground. So what do you need to bring to deal with those threats? Well, people are small and you're moving fast. So hitting targets can be complicated. And because of that, I like vehicles with Gatlings and repeaters. Um, we'll just say that the 40 rounds a tank has um, maybe a little bit limited for this purpose, even though a tank round would certainly destroy a person. Um, and even though the tank actually has ballistic Gatling, um, which would get the job done against personnel, the tank is just overkill if you're trying to go anti-personnel. That's the point. My preferred vehicle for this is the Cyclone TR, which is the turret version. You have two crews up front. Um, you have a manned Gatling turret on the back, which does an excellent job of laying down fire uh, and suppressing or just ending enemy combatants. Alternatively, you could opt to bring a Spartan or an Ursa or something, um, but I like the speed and agility of the um, Cyclone over the tankier options that you have available to you. Now, if you want something to help do aerial denial against aircraft, you have two options that are honestly both total monsters. The Centurion is basically a mobile hammerhead turret with a ton of firepower that can absolutely eat incoming ships alive through sustained repeater fire. The Ballista, on the other hand, has two smaller guns. Um, I think it's mostly supposed to be anti-personnel, but it can obviously work against air targets. But the main threat on the Ballista comes from the missiles and torpedoes on the rear that can lock and track targets effectively. Both of these are small enough that they can be hard for aircraft to find and lock onto and engage outside of that range. Now, if you have an ability to pair two of these together, you basically have a perfect situation. Um, I personally prefer the reliability and the endless ammo of the Centurion versus the patch-to-patch -patch effectiveness of the missiles that um, you know will run out. You need to restock, uh, but honestly, both are nasty. And when they are put together, they do a really good job of shutting down an entire area from air. Now there is a Cyclone AA version, but the missile size and the total number of missiles are small, so you don't really have a lot of staying power, and you lack the punch of the ballista. Um, the AA also has an EMP, but it is so small, it doesn't really do you a lot of good in most situations. Um, I've, honestly, about the only time I would opt for AA is if, you, is if you don't have a vehicle large enough to carry the larger options, um, or you know, you're near any pad where you could pull them, because it mostly requires something about the size of a Hercules to get the job done, and that's a lot of investment, but worthwhile with how well they do the job. When it comes to picking a tank, there's only one in the game, so choosing the Nova is an easy selection. Uh, also, you require a Hercules to carry it, but the amount of damage output is insane. 
Um, you have a few missiles to deal with aerial threats uh, and ballistic gatlings to engage with personnel targets. Coming soon in an upcoming patch, you'll have the Storm as an option, which if you remember my should you buy on that video, I have a lot of questions about the Storm. Mostly because it doesn't seem to be that much smaller, so transportation isn't resolved. Um, the damage output and durability are going to be sacrificed for the faster speed, so does that make sense to use? We'll have to find out. My assumption is that the Nova will often be the better choice unless you need to drive long distances or would rather opt to have multiple crew and multiple storms since they require less people to operate. Um, but they're not in the game yet, so we're going to withhold judgment or recommendation there because we said we were going to focus on the air vehicles in the game today. For me, there's just not a lot of point in a tank at this point in the game. Um, however, if you do find a place like Jumptown that has a total lockdown in place with AA being super established, uh, then you know having a tank can be a great option for clearing the way for your ships to land. Bringing a tank in to knock out Centurions and Ballistas makes a lot of sense. Um, the amount of times that those situations actually take place are pretty rare. Uh, the last somewhat combat-related item I would add would be a vehicle to storm a bunker with. Um, and for this, if there's hostile turrets, they're not going to engage a ground vehicle, so durability is not really that big of a focus. Um, I would say it really comes down to your crew size and what you have to carry. Uh, if you're going single player, then the STV is probably my preferred option, though the CYC is fast. Um, CYC is acronym for um, Cyclone. But it is fast and agile, um, so it's a great approach as well. If the weather is terrible or you have a small crew and something about the size of a constellation, then the Ursa makes the most sense, um, with the Spartan being really great for bigger groups, assuming you have the Hercules to bring it along. Now, if mining is your game, um, there are really only two vehicles in the game to choose from, being the Rock and the Rock DS. The DS is a two-man version that has a slightly larger reach on the mining arm, has more storage in the rear for the ore that you collect, but that's really about the only difference. Um, you're not mining faster with the second person since the jobs are separated. Um, you don't gain a better enclosure on your cabin, and it's bigger and harder to transport while being more expensive. So really, the only serious option is the original rock. Now, if you're talking about hand mining, though, then something quick and something with storage are good options. Um, I would also say that since you're going to be out in crappy weather because you're just on foot mining, then I would suggest the Ursa or the Lynx that have the climate-controlled interiors and personal storage so you can stay out for longer and store the goods on your vehicle instead of filling your backpack and having to make your way back to the ship to offload. It's a time saver that will earn you more money in the long run and allow you to stay out for longer because you're not dying to the elements or having to go back to your ship. You can stay right where you're operating. So that's most of this. Um, here's a quick few hits before we wrap up. If you need something that allows for space travel, then you only have rovers, or I'm sorry, the hover bikes, um, which currently in the game would be the Dragonfly, the Nox, and the Hover Quad, though soonish we'll have the X1 line that should be in the game as well to do that. I don't personally think that there's a ton of times where the bike is all that desirable in space, but it can come in handy in some unique situations. Uh, if you're looking for uh, you know, a racing ground vehicle, your best bet's probably the Knox if you want something that hovers, or if you're expected to use a wheeled vehicle, the Cyclone RC, um, which is the racing version, which has the best speed and boost of the lineup with apparently some better suspension. Um, it also has good control that we've talked about before. Um, probably makes the most sense for a wheeled vehicle. Um, lastly, if you want a vehicle for box missions, then I personally like the Mule with the outward storage and small size. It gives it a lot of flexibility in what you can fit into, um, even if things <laughs> look a little bit ridiculous because it's such an odd little vehicle. Um, most ground missions don't require a vehicle to do boxes, but if you need it, the Mule is probably the right choice to get that job done. Overall, um, CIG is putting a lot more time, effort, and just quantity into ground vehicles, indicating a pretty clear intention that they are going to have a purpose, or at least they expect them to have purpose. Um, that may not be the case for most of these at the moment, but you can kind of see where things are going and why it may be more important in the future. In general, any ground vehicle um, will get many jobs done. You can haul a box in a tank, for example, but that doesn't make it the right option. Um, so as long as you have the right weather protection and appropriate ship to carry it, um, you have a lot of flexibility. But knowing how you intend to use it can inform you on how you should be making your decision about what you should have. 
So with that in mind, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more coming soon. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.